Man, this fog just won't quit. The weather report said it might start snowing soon. But what's going to happen if it snows with all this fog? Whoa, where'd you guys come from? Wow, that's quite a crowd you got there. We ran into each other back there, so we came together. The fog's so thick that sometimes you can't see your nose in front of your face, so everyone's forming groups now. It's definitely been weird lately. It's so cold, too. Visibility's so bad, it's scary. Can I stick close to you, senpai? Oh, this girl never changes. It really is hard to see anything in this, though. It's just like on the other side. Oh, guys, put on your glasses! All clear. What the hell's going on? These glasses are meant to help us see through the fog in the other world. But putting that aside, no glasses would improve one's visibility in a fog under normal circumstances. Then, um, could the fog from over there be leaking into our world? Huh? Well, you, you guys think that's it? I was kind of expecting you to ignore it as Chie being random again. <laughs> it's, it's just a thought. <laughs> Anyways, today's the last day of exams, right? Let's get them over with so we can meet up at the special headquarters after school. <laughs> wow, we haven't used that name in a while. Specialists are raising concerns that this fog may consist of harmful substances. More and more citizens are calling for an investigation into the cause of the fog and the facts about it. Though the government has begun its preliminary investigation, many feel that the causes will be hard to pinpoint. Ah, oh, is this fog really dangerous? You hardly ever see people walking around town anymore. Or here either. Everyone's too scared of the fog now to go outdoors much. It does seem a lot like the fog on the other side. But beyond that, I'm clueless. There's another item of note here. A summary of Namatame's career with details about the case. The suspect was having an affair with the first victim. It seems she was killed due to relationship troubles. Also in April, Miss Saki Konishi's body was discovered. The police are looking into a motive for the murder. In July, a boy living in Inaba performed a copycat murder. The boy was initially thought to be the culprit behind all the killings, but later suspicion was thrown upon Namatame. Last month, the suspect attempted to kidnap a seven-year-old girl of Inaba, resulting in his arrest. It seems Namatame is still confined to his hospital bed, so further interrogation has yet to commence. So it's finally over. A lot of stuff's happened. But all that's left is for the police to build a case for Namatame, right? Whether he confesses or not, it was him who did everything. Getting him convicted is up to your uncle. But the stuff he was saying was so obviously nuts. If he says anything about the TV world, he might be considered mentally unstable. Also, I heard before that if the police don't have enough hard evidence, it's difficult to build a case. Yes, there are many such cases and culprits. It's the eternal conundrum for crime investigators. So even if they're caught, the law can't do shit? It's a possibility. 
hell's up with that? We all know he did it. You can't just let a maniac who thinks he's saving people by killing them run wild on the streets. They better not dismiss something this serious because of some mental issues. Saki-senpai. No, not just her, or that announcer. Even King Moron is his fault. If it weren't for what he did, nobody would have tried a copycat killing. It's his fault Nanako-chan's in the hospital right now, too. What's the matter? A Katatsu? Oh, then why don't we go check them out right now? I know Nanako-chan would be psyched if she came home and found a new Kotatsu! Dude, why didn't you tell me sooner? The winter season's coming up and we just got a bunch of them in stock! Alright, off to the houseware section for Nanako-chan! If we're getting a Kotatsu, we better get some oranges to complete the set. It's a cliche because it's true, damn it. The best compliment to a Kotatsu would be a heated rug. Dude, that much juice would kill the breaker the moment you tried to microwave something. Oh yeah, you've never used a Kotatsu before, huh, Ted? It's nice and toasty. Can I still stay here? You kept your promise to me, so I should be going back. But I don't want to go until Nana-chan gets better. Of course you can stay. How many times do we have to say this before it gets through to you? Nanako-chan would be sad if you weren't there when she wakes up. But I couldn't save Nana-chan. Don't be silly. We saved her together. We caught the killer, man. We couldn't have done that without you. Teddy, you shouldn't talk that way when Nanako-chan is still fighting. You guys. C can I really? That's right, you're just by yourself at home now, huh? Hey, why don't we pick out a Christmas present for Nanako-chan while we're at it? That's a great idea. I'm sure she'll be out of the hospital by then. All right, but none of this charge it to Yosuke stuff this time. Seriously. We're clear on this, right? Oh, come on. Why would we do something like that? Dude, the clothes you got for this guy? I almost pissed my pants when I saw the receipt. How many days do you think I had to work to pay that off? Well, I can't help it if Juness overcharges for things. Ugh. Well, I guess you gotta expect that. It's not like Chia-san's ever had the occasion to help a guy shop before. What? What did you just say? Come on, baby. Don't fight over me. Stay, Stay out, out of this! Them be and think of a present for Nanako-chan on our own. But what would a girl her age want? What do you think Nanako-chan would appreciate most? Yeah, that, that white round shape's the best. A plush doll's the way to go. Not a bad idea. It would allow you two to play together indoors during the cold winter. That's not really for kids. It's still pretty cute, just like the real thing. <laughs> All right, as soon as Nanako-chan's out of the hospital, we'll have a party at your place. Yes! And we'll bake the cake! Of course! Let's make it a cake to remember. No, you're not! Are you trying to send Nanako-chan back to the hospital? Hello, this is Adachi. Um, I want you to stay calm and listen to me, okay? Nanako-chan's condition suddenly got worse. 
The doctor wants you to come to the hospital immediately. We'll be waiting. Come on, let's go! Isn't it? Isn't it filled with viruses? They said so on TV. Isn't there a vaccine or something for it? Calm down, please. That's just a rumor. Don't tell me to calm down. You're lying. We know you have medicine for this. Are you just going to stand there and watch us die? Why would we do something like that? What a commotion. What the hell's that supposed to mean? Can't you see how much pain she's in? All we can do right now is monitor her condition closely. <laughs> Dojima-san, you need to return to your... I don't give a damn about myself. Do something about Nanako. <clears throat> Dojima-san! Just save her. For God's sake, please save Nanako. We'll do our best. I must ask you to step outside for the time being. Nanako. Hey, can't you do something? This all has to do with the world you came from. Can't you figure something out? Uh, I'm thinking. I'm thinking, but... Damn it. What does this have to happen to a little girl like her? Me neither. This is all that bastard's fault. Nanako-chan's gonna be okay, right? You guys still here? How is Dojima-san doing? His wounds opened up again. They're treating it over in his room now. Any luck with your investigation on Namatame? Um, about that. I won't mince words here. We're gonna have a hard time making these charges stick. What's that mean? I talked with the guys at the station, and it'll be next to impossible to find them guilty in court. Especially given the reason why we took him off our list of suspects for the first case. Oh yeah, something about him having an alibi. Yeah, that. And the whole angle about him putting people into TVs. There's no way that'll stand up in court. No one would believe that. What the public wants is when, where, and how Namatame killed these people. And Dojima-san knows it. Well, ain't you calm about this? I'm just telling you the truth. And you call yourself a cop? Huh? You want to see that stuff so bad? We'll show you! Hurry up and bring a TV here, damn it! Hey, stop! What the? Is Nanako Chan's family here? Hurry inside. Please talk to her. On. No, Nanako chan. Daddy. <laughs> Nanako chan. Nanako chan. Can you hear us? Do you understand what we're saying? Your big brother's here with you. Just hang in there. <laughs> Where's Dojima-san? We're calling for him right now. How's Nanako?
Nanako! Nanako! I'm sorry, sir. Nana Chan. We did everything we could, but we still couldn't figure out what caused this. Dojima-san, what's with that look? Huh? What's wrong, everyone? Hmm? Huh? Wait, is, is Nanaka-chan... But then, where did Dojima-san go? His room isn't that way. Wait a sec, that's the way to... said he was admitted to this hospital. You transported into the same hospital? For crying out loud, he's the suspect in the case! What are you getting mad at me for? This is the biggest hospital, and he's in no condition to be moved. I can't tell you that. Just tell us where he is already. Dojima-san's on his way, ain't he? You don't know what he's gonna do there if we don't stop him! Kanji-kun, you don't mean... Uh, hold on. Just what are you guys talking about? Cough it up! Where's this room? <laughs> Top floor in the second surgical ward. Furthest room back. But there's a police guard. I was always watching over Nana-chan, and I still couldn't save her. It happened in my world. Even though I was the only teddy in that place, I... I still couldn't do anything. I... <laughs> Let go of me. I need to speak to him. Like we said, without permission. Permission? Who gave them permission to kill Nanako? Tell me that, huh? The hell with you all! Why is he still alive when Nanako's dead? Give me back Nanako! Give her back! She's... She's all I have! She's... The only one... In the world! Call a doctor! Let go of me. I need to... Holy crap! Dojima-san! Quick, get him to his room! I'll go alert the doctors! Dojima-san... Was he seriously gonna... <sighs> His only daughter's dead. Nothing would have surprised me. Dojima-san probably knew that there's little to no chance Namatame would be convicted. Damn it. He killed Senpai. And now Nanako-chan. And the bastard's gonna walk away without paying for what he did. That's not right! one that gets to go on living.
I... I was scared, so... I... I... You have your life, and now you want your freedom, too?! It's your fault that Nanako Chun's... I... I didn't... I... Twelve o'clock. Is it the Midnight Channel? Hey, isn't this... I failed to save her. It's because you got in my way. Another Namatame? How? The real one's right here and we already beat his shadow. No. Come to think of it, Namatame never faced his other self. And we didn't witness his shadow returning to his body as a persona either. Perhaps that's why we're seeing this now. What the... I failed. But it wasn't my fault. And the law can't touch me anyway. What? Is that what Namatami's really thinking? Then... He wasn't deranged or anything. He knew what he was doing. To hell with the law! I will never forgive what you did! This... Please! Stop! Huh? Stop what? We ain't even done anything yet. Or do you want us to do something? Something fitting for a bastard like you! Kanji. <sighs> do whatever you want. You hate me because the child died, don't you? I don't care either way. Living or dying makes no difference to me. But you, you're different. <laughs> you can't do such a thing. You wouldn't dare, right? <laughs> I'll continue saving people. It's my mission. Mission? My God. Please, stop. He wants us to stop. What should we do? What do you mean? We can't let this bastard do whatever he pleases. Still, what are you going to do? No way I'm gonna walk out of here doing nothing. I... I understand, but... This must be a luxury suite. Most hospital wards don't have such large televisions. Why, with something like this in the room, this man could escape at any time. Although once he enters, he may find there's no way out. Wait a second. You don't mean... Are you... serious? You're just gonna turn your back and walk away? That's... but... What? What's gotten into you guys? This is crazy! How can we do something like that? Chie! Everyone, listen to me. If we're gonna do this, now is our only shot. We won't get a second chance. At this rate, the guy's gonna get off the hook, and he'll go around saving people again. You just heard what this bastard's really thinking. If that happens, it'll be just like Nanako-chan and Senpai. Who knows how many innocent people will die this time? I can't let something like that go. Someone close to me died. Her killer can't be convicted. And now I'm gonna let the same thing happen again? There's no way I can do that! It's just wrong, isn't it? All we have to do is push him inside the TV. That's it. We do that one thing, and this is all over. J just p push him inside? If any of you want no part in this, just leave the room. I'm not gonna force you to stay. As for me, nothing could make me forgive this bastard. But before we do this, I want to hear what you think. What do you want to do, leader? We don't have time to wait. If we don't do this now, the cops will come back. What are you trying to say? Something. 
something we don't know. What don't we know? But we just heard the guy's true feelings on TV. What didn't you understand? Well, what is it? I already told you there's no time to waste. Are you even getting at something here, or are you just stalling? <laughs> Missing? Like what exactly? Damn it, I've heard enough of this bullshit. Give me a straight answer! Are we doing this or not? That's all I give a damn about right now. He's right. Let's all calm down for a second. I'm perfectly calm. Hey, what did you mean by we're missing something? What's there to miss with a sick bastard like him? Hey, let's all take a deep breath. After what happened to Nanako-chan and seeing Dojima-san, we're not thinking straight right now. Fine. You're right. We should calm down and think rationally about this. I realize now that we've heard almost nothing from Namatame's perspective. There's no denying that this man brought great harm to Nanako-chan. But other than that point, the rest comes from our assumptions based on watching the Midnight Channel a moment ago. I won't deny that we were blinded by the heat of the moment, trying to impute all responsibility to him rashly. But... Yeah, the guy's not saying anything. Whatever reason he had, there's no doubt about the fact that he'd been throwing people inside the TV. It was him who put Senpai through that misery. How can we possibly understand someone who says killing people is the same as saving them? Failing to understand and failing to listen are rather different things. <laughs> Truthfully, not all the hitches that were nagging at me have been answered yet. We'll have to see what he can tell us about them. Though it appears he's in no condition to do so at the moment. True. Dealing with him right now might not solve all the things that are bothering us. Damn it. But you better remember this. I'll do everything I can to stop him from repeating what he's done. Anytime, anywhere, anything. Jeez, how the hell can you stay so calm, man? Then again, that's why you're our leader. <sighs> All right, let's go ahead and think this through as much as we need. If we leave any unanswered questions behind, we'll just be lying to ourselves. Yeah, that ain't gonna cut it. All right, I'm convinced. <sighs> Thank you. I'll think as hard as I can and try to help. We all know how you feel, Yosuke. <laughs> Come on, we've accomplished this much together, haven't we? Right, together. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry, and thanks.
What are you doing? You can't be in here. Oh, crap! We were keeping an eye on the suspect. The police officers outside seem to have their hands full helping Dojima-san. If Namatame were to escape, it would be a disaster for the police's reputation. And their trust in you, Adachi-san. Oh, I see. We'll tighten security from now on, and I'll arrange for him to be transported out as soon as possible. So, if you guys can keep quiet about being in here, I'd really appreciate it. How is he, Doctor? He seemed to be extremely agitated a moment ago. He seems fine for now, but he really needs his rest. Outside, everyone. Doctor's orders. Understood. We should go, too. Let's get back to Nanako-chan's room. So what's this thing we're missing, huh? To tell the truth, there's something that's bothering me, too. Why did he start killing people in the first place? Well, he said himself it was to save them, right? So he killed his lover in order to save her and kept going? The police speculated the first murder was related to the affair, so they called in Namatame for questioning. But everything in his testimony and his bearing, no matter what they looked at, they found nothing suspicious. If he truly is twisted enough to believe that murder is a means of saving people, I think that would have shown through. Maybe he faked it real well. Or maybe he started out with a normal motive and got a taste for killing after the first time. No, if that were the case, his motive for killing that announcer would be even more inexplicable. Namatame and his wife were separated at the time. Both Misuzu Hiragi and himself testified that she had discarded him. Hiragi also knew about Yamano beforehand, and Namatame was shocked to hear of Yamano's death. Their relationship was known and was not strained to the point of murder. There's simply no motive in the affair angle. The police invested a great deal of effort into investigating this point. Therefore, we have no convincing motive for Namatame to kill Mayumi Yamano, although her name was written in Namatame's own diary. His reason for killing her. It's still possible that he was crazy to begin with and no one realized, right? Uh, I don't really get any of this. Oh, this is so confusing! Hey, we could hear you in there. This is a hospital. Maybe you should quiet down a little. Oh, there you are, all of you. Please come with me immediately. Huh? What's going on? What are you waiting for? Hurry, go! Where am I? Is this Teddy's world? This doesn't quite feel like it, though. I remember being at the hospital. That's right, Nana-chan. I... I couldn't do anything. Why do I even exist? I couldn't keep my promise. I lost my reason to be there. Th that's it. I remember now. So, it was true. Guys, Sensei, what should I do? Oh, there they are. Nanako-chan came around. Huh? What did you just say? Nanako-chan's alive? Uh, are you serious? It's very rare to be resuscitated after one's heart and lungs fail, but it does happen. But 
Until I know why she collapsed in the first place, I can't say for sure how well she'll recover from here on. Still, Nanako-chan's a fighter, and she's trying desperately to stay alive. So, so this isn't a joke? You're actually telling the truth? Nanako-chan... <laughs> oh my god! I... I... <laughs> this is amazing! Miracles do happen. I'm so glad. I... I didn't know what I was gonna do! <laughs> <laughs> you all should go home for the night. I'll speak with Dojima-san tomorrow about Nanako-chan's treatment. It's rather chilly outside. If it starts snowing, be careful not to catch a cold. Wait a second, where's Teddy? I noticed he didn't come with us when we went to Namatame's room. You're right. That's weird. I figured he wouldn't move from Nanako-chan's side. Teddy, where did you go? Oh yeah, he has a cell with him. Wait, I shouldn't use mine inside the hospital. I'll try calling him up once we're outside. Oh, there you are. I forgot to tell you. Don't pull that again, okay? You can't just meet with the suspect like that. Anyway, I came to give you an update on Dojima-san. His wounds opened up a little, but he's treated now and he's fast asleep. He'll be alright, don't worry. Knowing him by this time tomorrow, he'll be on his feet and yelling at people again. Uh, don't tell him I said that. Anyway, I heard Nanako-chan's on the road to recovery again. You guys were being so dramatic that I got really worried. But this is good news. She'll be well again in no time. By the way, you're all alone at the house now, right? Well, enjoy your freedom while you can. Dojima-san and Nanako-chan will be back soon after all. Well, I better head back. You go home too, before it gets too late. Uh, see ya. Couldn't save. I couldn't save. Why? Mayumi. And that girl too. I couldn't save them. Huh? Uh, what's the matter? Feeling guilty all of a sudden? Sheesh. I can't reach him. Did that stupid bear forget to charge the battery? We took a quick look around the hospital, but there's no sign of him. I wonder where he went. It's snow. Hey, you're right. Wow, it's been a while since I last saw real snow. It doesn't look that pretty, though, because of this fog. I guess this makes it the first snow of the year. <sighs> it's freezing. Let's go home. Hey, Yosuke, if you find Teddy, don't forget to contact us, all right? I know, I know. Let's meet up at the special headquarters tomorrow. Ted. I hope he just went back home by himself. He's probably fine. But I'll hurry home just in case. Well, see you tomorrow.
Quite some time. Do not be alarmed. You are fast asleep in the real world. I have summoned you within your dreams. Now then, your journey has taken you quite a distance thus far. Do you believe you'll be able to successfully solve this mystery? Splendid! The precise destination of this vehicle, ah, that too is getting rather hard to judge. If we continue driving blindly, we may end up leading you further away from the mystery that you must reach. Well, why don't we take a moment to look back on your journey? It was for that purpose that I summoned you here tonight. Margaret? What's right? What you should choose to do in life? The answers to those things lie within you. I'm going to think about my life and set my own path. We are experiencing the words engraved into your memory during your journey. Failing to understand and failing to listen are rather different things. All right, let's go ahead and think this through as much as we need. If we leave any unanswered questions behind, we'll just be lying to ourselves. I'll think as hard as I can and try to help. Come on, we've accomplished this much together, haven't we? Right, together. And it seems you have comrades with you as well. Those heading in the same direction through this dense fog. We'll be parked for the moment while I confirm our current heading. As I mentioned previously, this year will signal a great change in your life. Though there isn't much time left, it can be worth your while to take the time to stop and reflect. People are like water flowing in a river. There is only one stream, but all who pass through it are affected differently. Some travel fast, some change their course, experiencing countless events as they travel down the river of time. Just so. The state of this room reflects the scenery of your heart. Perhaps this may be a time for contemplation rather than action. Missing. I looked all over the neighborhood, but I couldn't find him anywhere. I hope 
so. Risei and the others are checking inside the TV to see if he's gone back to the other side. We're meeting pretty soon, so will you come with me to Juness? No use, man. We can't find him. No luck for me either. I didn't sense anything over there. The fog's so dense it might be affecting my readings. I wish I could do better. I'm sorry. The Ted. Don't tell me he really went back to his world this time. We told him over and over that he could stay here. Yeah, we'll just have to believe in him for now. He plays dumb a lot, but he's attached to us deep down. He wouldn't disappear without saying anything, right? I'm worried for Teddy myself, but let's trust in him and await his return. Right now, we must concentrate on the case. It won't be long before Namatame is transferred to another location. We must hurry, or we will miss our only chance to get his perspective on this. You know, I've been thinking about the case since, but something just doesn't seem right. Let's quickly review the facts. Of all the victims, only two were killed. Miss Yamano the announcer, and Saki-san. From the documents we found in the car, we know Namatame had some sort of dealings with them. After that, there were multiple attempted murders in which we were targeted. It was only when he took Nanako-chan that we caught him in the act, identifying his modus operandi in the process. I want to hear you put it like that. Sounds like the dude's guilty. As a result of Namatame's arrest, the police admitted that Mitsuo Kubo was a mere copycat killer. Back up to yesterday. Remember when you said Namatame didn't have a motive to kill the announcer? That's what's bothering me. Right. Either he's completely nuts, or we're misunderstanding something. You lost me. She's trying to say that if Namatame is sane, then there may be facts in the case we don't know about yet. Sane or insane? Sounds like a play I saw before. When he talks about saving people, what does that actually mean? I don't think there's any doubt that it includes kidnapping people and throwing them into the TV. Could he mean saving them through death? He did call himself a savior and said that the other side is a wonderful world. So they'll be saved if they die? What a bunch of crap! The bastard should have gone and saved himself! What do you think, senpai? If you think about it normally, it's gotta be him. <laughs> but there ain't nothing normal about that world anyways. There's something I've been wondering about for a while. When we first encountered him, he said, You're the ones I saved. Don't worry, I'll save this girl too. So, um, if he saves people by killing them, did he save us too? Wouldn't he actually have failed to save us? You raise a good point. If he thinks that salvation comes only through death, his words to us make no sense. And another thing, the Namatame who appeared on the Midnight Channel said he failed to save Nanako-chan. Well, maybe he really was trying to save the victims by putting them inside the TV. C come on, don't get all quiet like that. You guys know I just say the first dumb thing that pops into my head. <laughs> The possibility that he truly intended to save us. But he's still the one who threw in Saki-senpai in that announcer, right? Sure, we haven't nailed down his motives, but that doesn't change the fact that he killed them. Or what? You think someone else was involved? What makes you think so? Morning letter? Oh yeah! Whatever happened to that thing? If Namatami's the killer, he must have been the one who wrote it, right? Let's review them.
Yes, that's right. Isn't that kind of odd? Would someone who thinks he's saving people by killing them write stuff like don't rescue or kill? Yeah, and the will be put in and killed part doesn't make sense either. If the killer was writing it, wouldn't it be more like I'll put in and kill? Hey, could this mean... It's almost like someone else wrote this letter. But only the killer would write such a letter and deliver it to Dojima-san's house, right? If someone else wrote it, that could only mean... Dear God, since this is such an unusual case, I was absolutely convinced that other than the Kubo incident, there was one culprit. So Namatame really was trying to save his victims? Everything is exactly the opposite of what it first seemed. In Namatame's parlance, failing would have been the first two cases when the victims died. If he had used his method twice and failed both times, he would hardly have continued using the TV. And yet he did. It all seems to suggest that someone else wrote this warning letter while observing the entire case. Someone else? Then... It wasn't Namatame that killed Saki-senpai and the announcer? We can't say for certain yet. We urgently need to speak with Namatame face to face. How though? After what happened yesterday, they said they're gonna tighten security. I have a plan. But there's no time to waste. Let's hurry to the hospital. Hey, this place is off limits. I'm a consultant with the police. I'd like a few words with Namatame-san. May I go in? This is Unit 252, requesting confirmation on an ID. Name of Naoto Shirogane. Huh? Ah, understood. I see. Well, you're on the list. I can give you a few minutes, but I'll have to record your conversation with him for security purposes. Not that I expect you'll get anything coherent out of the guy. He's been spouting nothing but gibberish. I'd like him to accompany me as well. He has no identification, but this is an emergency situation, and he's here in Detective Dojima's stead. Huh? Detective Dojima sent him? I wasn't informed of this. I'll vouch for his identity. Well, I guess it's better than dealing with the man himself. We have our hands full with the transport procedures, so the last thing we need is Detective Dojima running wild. Detective Adachi is busy somewhere, too. This is Unit 252. Huh? I see. Has something happened? There's something about a suspicious object out in the lobby. Ah, oh, well then, this works out nicely. You should back up your colleagues downstairs. We'll keep watch over Namatame-san. A disturbance in a hospital lobby, after all. It sounds serious. If anything happens, hit the nurse call button. I'll leave the rest to you. Understood. Please be careful. I knew they were undermanned, but I didn't expect it to go this smoothly. There's nothing much inside that suspicious object. So he won't be gone long. All right, then now's our chance to talk to Namatame. Namatame-san, there's something we'd like to ask you. It's tempting to think that you were the culprit behind this entire case. And to be honest, there are many in this town who hope you are. But we are here to learn the truth. So please, answer our questions. Huh? No. 
if nobody saves them, they'll be killed. That's why I put them in there. I couldn't save them. Huh? Me? Mm. Then tell me if my estimation is correct so far. After discovering the Yamano and Konishi incidents, you realized an appearance on the Midnight Channel meant certain death. Thus, to save her from that fate, you kidnapped Yukiko Amagi. You couldn't let her be killed, so you threw her into the TV, preventing the killer in this world from reaching her. And you repeated the process, as more individuals appeared on the Midnight Channel. It all falls into place. His body is weak, but his mind is sound. He's trying to tell us the truth. Yeah, but if the stuff he's saying is true... There's another killer who murdered the first two victims? Indulge us in a few more questions. I didn't know. I never thought it would be that kind of place. talking about I have no idea I want to know that too as I thought you believe me did they find him did they find the one who did such cruel things my Yumi Please calm down. Our ability to find the culprit rests on you. We know about the other world. In fact, we're the only ones who can fully understand what you have to say. Only... you? We did blame you for everything at first. But now I think we can accept whatever you got to tell us as truth. Please, tell us everything you can, calmly and slowly. You're willing to listen? Do my story? <sighs> All right. Soon after my affair with Mayumi became common knowledge, I returned to my parents' home as if to run away from the scandal. And I started drinking heavily to drown my anxieties. I hadn't been able to reach Mayumi at all, and that didn't help either. Mayumi, where are you? She'd been disgraced on all the afternoon shows and forced to resign from the program she was on. I caused her so much trouble. I wanted to at least apologize to her, but I couldn't even do that. I lost the will and energy to do anything. Then, one day, the rumor I heard some time ago came back to me. Since I had nothing better to do, I sat down blankly in front of the TV and watched my own reflection. And all of a sudden, there was Mayumi. Mayumi? Is that you? The Mayumi inside the TV looked as if she was calling to me for help. Mayumi? Mayumi! When I reached out unthinkingly to touch her, my arm disappeared into the TV, as if I had dipped it into a pool of water. I was so shocked that I lost my balance and nearly fell face first into the TV.
I was so scared. I couldn't understand what just happened. I thought maybe I'd gone insane. In the end, I decided to think of it as just a dream, and I went back to the city the next day after finishing work. The next afternoon when I got to work, I was fired on the spot, as I expected. That wasn't what broke me, though. It was Mayumi being found dead. And not just that, but it had happened in my hometown. I was dumbstruck, but later on, I remember the image of Mayumi I'd seen that night. Was it not a dream? Could it really have been an SOS from Mayumi? I hadn't touched another TV because the first time was so terrifying, but I decided to try it again, and I confirmed that none of it was a dream. So that image, was it something Mayumi showed me, calling for help? That's how I felt. And eventually, you learned of the Midnight Channel. I remembered that when Mayumi was alive, she was chasing a rumor about some bizarre TV program. I'd heard about it before, but I thought it was just an urban legend. But then Mayumi appeared on it, and later turned up dead. The more I thought about it, the harder it became to believe that the two events were unrelated. Soon after that, I came back to Inaba to answer the police's questions. I'd lost my job, and I wanted to know the truth of Mayumi's death for myself. Then, on another rainy night, someone else appeared on the Midnight Channel. It was a girl. She looked like she was calling for help, just like Mayumi. The first thing that came into my mind was, maybe this girl will be the next to die. And that was Saki-senpai. I'd been following all the news about Mayumi, so I noticed right away that she was the girl who found Mayumi's body. And if my hunch was right, she'd be the next victim. I didn't want her to die the way Mayumi did, so I desperately kept watching. I was consumed with the idea of rescuing her. Then, little by little, her image on the screen came into sharper focus. It became sharper? <sighs> How did you find out it was her? After I came back, my father couldn't bear to see me in such low spirits, and gave me a job with the family business. I met that girl when I delivered a package to the liquor store. After agonizing over it, I decided to meet her, and told her to be careful. But that same night, on the TV... She looked as if she was being engulfed by some black shape. She was writhing in pain. That's why I warned her. Why won't she pick up the phone? Come on! Please! The next day, they found her dead. Ugh. I knew she was going to be murdered, but I couldn't save her. I blamed myself, thinking there must have been something I could have done. There was no one who depended on me. Nobody at work, not even my wife. Mayumi was the only one who accepted me for who I was. But she was murdered, and the same person killed another girl. I was... I was beside myself. I couldn't forgive myself for doing nothing. You really did love Miss Yamano. Yes. From the bottom of my heart. Before I was married, my wife made it big in show business. I was happy for her, but it put a strain on our relationship. I think I can kind of relate. It was around that time when I met Mayumi. She was interviewing our candidate for the next election. She was a big-name announcer, but she only worked with local stations, and her attitude towards work was similar to mine. We both came from Inaba, so she was easy to talk to. I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't help getting intimate with her. She gave meaning to my life. Soon after Saki-san was found dead, yet another girl appeared on TV. That was you.
she'll be kidnapped next. And murdered. I can't let her end up like Mayumi and that other girl. This time, I'm gonna do something. My opponent was a murderer who left no clues to his identity. I thought hard about what I could do to protect her from someone like that. I'll never convince her. If she gets suspicious and they arrest me, who'll save her then? The girl inside the TV looked as if she was smiling at me. And that's when it hit me. I apparently had the power to go through the TV screen to the other side. Then, what if I put her into the TV and give her shelter there before the killer gets her? What are you trying to tell me? That it's safe over there? Is that it? The girl inside the TV seemed to smile at me again. And I thought, no matter what kind of place it might be, it's better than being slaughtered. Once things calmed down, I could just let her out again. If she's inside the TV, there's no way they can find her. It felt as if everything was starting to come together in my mind. Could it be that Mayumi gave me that power to prevent any more victims from meeting her fate? Was it my mission to save people? But there was a big problem. If I explained the situation to the victim, they wouldn't understand. I had already tried that and failed miserably. It seemed the only thing I could do was to take them away. If that was my mission, I'd just have to do it. Or so I thought. Mayumi, please lend me your strength. So, since you thought people who appeared on the Midnight Channel would be killed, you kidnapped us in order to save us. Mission? Give me a break! You never stopped and wondered about any of this? I thought I was the only one who could help them. I did call the police, but they didn't believe me. I knew the area well, thanks to my job. I had a large truck, and I could move around without suspicion. I thought my job as a delivery man would be the perfect cover for my mission. I thought no one else could do it. But, are you telling me that I wasn't saving them? If a person is still within the TV world when the fog appears here, they will die. Beginning with Yukiko-san, the people you thought you had been saving were, in fact, in mortal peril. It was my friends here who really saved us all. I had a feeling that was it. When I went after that little girl and entered the TV myself, for the first time, I had some doubts about myself. You refer to Nanakarchan, correct? The police were after me, so I had to get away. But I still felt I needed to do everything I could to save that poor little girl. That's why I went in after her. But the TV world was completely different than I imagined. Such an abominable, grotesque place. I knew that the three of you who I saved went back to your normal lives, so I didn't realize how terrible that world was. I never knew you couldn't even get out of that place on your own. No. That's a cowardly way to put it. I'd probably already begun to realize that it was a dangerous place. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have gone to see you all. See us? Wait, are you talking about the concert we did at Juness? Yes. I wanted to know why the ones I saved were all hanging out with each other, and how much you remembered. But in the end, I couldn't bring myself to say anything and ran home. I must have felt too guilty. <laughs> but all the doubts and anxieties I'd been unconsciously suppressing exploded out when I entered the television myself. I thought I was going insane. I probably did. And you know the rest. When I came to, I was lying in a hospital bed. You really were trying to save people. But I ended up doing just the opposite. Oh, what a fool. I always wanted to enter the world of politics and become useful to society. 
that after losing my job and the woman I loved, all I had left was this power. I convinced myself that world was some sort of sanctuary, and I secretly believed myself to be a hero. I never doubted what I saw on TV, and believed everything was as I wanted it to be. I didn't think for myself at all. That's why I couldn't protect them. I'm to blame for all of this. I suppose so. But the things I've done are too serious to be brushed aside like that. I have no intentions of running away from my crimes. I'm prepared to face the consequences. Kidnapping is already a serious crime. And on top of that, I put all those lives in danger. I'm sorry. The Midnight Channel and the Other World? You can hardly be blamed for failing to understand them properly. We must apologize to you as well. Had we let our emotions blind us to the truth, we would have piled all the responsibility on you. I guess from your point of view, people did stop dying once you started saving people. The more you did it, the more you really believed you were preventing their deaths. I'm such a joke. I'm sorry. I'm getting a little tired. What, what are you all crammed in here for? My apologies. We'll be leaving now. Wait. I beg you. Please, find whoever's behind this. You children are the only ones who know about that world. It's all clear now. He never committed any murders. It was another party who threw the first two victims into the TV. Get out of here! I told you, he's almost ready to be transported. We can't have anything else happen. Sheesh, I better not see you rascals here again. Nanako-chan looks like she's in pain. She's fighting for dear life. This was the last place we saw Teddy, right? He was so worried about her. How can he flake out like this when we have to find the real killer? The police consider the matter closed. We'll have to do all the investigation from here on out. Let's revisit Saki-san and Miss Yamano's incidents and see if we can turn up fresh details. But it's been over six months. Wouldn't the trail be cold by now? I know, but we can't give up. We're the only ones who understand what's really going on. And you never know. People might remember some things now because they've had so much time to think about it. Let's split up and talk to people all over town tomorrow. We'll meet up in the evening to discuss our findings. I hope we can find out something about Teddy, too.